Uh, turned it over a couple times, uh, three and out. Um, you know, and the defense ended up playing over 50 plays in the second half, which is, you know, you're not really in control of the game when you do that, regardless of what the score is. And I think we all need to learn some lessons, you know, from that. Um, but it was a great win for us, and I'm really pleased and happy to see some of our players getting recognized. You know, Minka is a National Defensive Player of the Week and um, SEC Player of the Week. Um, J.K. Scott on special teams. Jalen Hurd is a freshman. Um, these guys have played very, very well, and uh, we're extremely pleased that they are being recognized for that. From an injury standpoint, you know, we have a couple guys that will be out today probably. Um, hopefully they'll be back tomorrow. Um, we're a little banged up after this game. Not serious things, but, um, you know, things that may require another day's rest for, you know, several guys, including Reuben Foster and Alphonse Taylor. Um, Tennessee, uh, this game is a really big rivalry game and a special one for a lot of people uh, in our state that are our supporters and our fans. And, um, you know, it's obviously a big game for our players as well. And it's very challenging to, you know, play this game on the road as it always is because there's always a lot of energy and enthusiasm. Uh, Tennessee, I think, has an outstanding team. Um, you know, they lost one game this year to Texas A&M, who also has an outstanding team uh, in overtime. Um, they have a lot of veteran players returning, I think 18 starters total from last year. Um, quarterback's doing an outstanding job for him. He's a dual threat guy that uh, is very difficult to defend. Uh, they have a very good offensive scheme in terms of uh, being able to run the ball and the explosive plays that they ever make uh, with the skilled players that they have make them very Coach, could you talk about kind of the, uh, I guess, the aggressive mindset? Maybe Jeremy Pruitt has something to do with that. But this defense, they all want to make big plays. They've all, you've had a bunch of guys kind of harass the quarterbacks and get sacks and everything. Well, I thought one of the things that we did well in the last game was we did affect the quarterback with the front seven and the pass rush. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how many sacks we got, five or six or whatever it was, but uh, I think there were a lot of other plays that the quarterback was affected on, um, probably about a dozen, uh, and some of those led to big plays. Uh, a couple of our interceptions were because the quarterback was under duress. Um, so I think it's a team thing, uh, but I, I do think that um, we, we need to be more difficult to score on, uh, regardless of whether you want to say we're aggressive or we're not aggressive, or we play better coverage in the back end, or we play the ball better, or um, w whatever. I mean, uh, you got to be difficult to score on. And we played two games this year where we've given up a lot of points, and uh, so we got to get all 11 guys playing together and doing a good job so that uh, we are more difficult to score on. Alvin Kamara is a guy you're obviously familiar with. What's a challenge in defending a guy like him who can run with toughness between the tackles, explosive on the outside, and also his ability to catch the ball is pretty outstanding too? Well, you know, Alvin to me is an outstanding player. Um, and I think he's got great speed. He's very instinctive. He's a very good receiver. Uh, he's very good running the ball inside or out. Uh, and, you know, uses his speed to his advantages on the perimeter. Uh, and on loose plays, whether it's screens or whatever, he has been just dynamic this year. So uh, this guy is a fantastic player that has a lot of production uh, and certainly um, is used well in their offense relative to making it difficult to defend him, the quarterback. Um, Jalen Hurd, when he's in there, uh, he's a different style guy, but just as effective in a lot of ways. So these guys have a lot of we weapons, and uh, their skilled players outside on, have, have done an outstanding job of making big plays as well. Middle here with Michael. You, having two guys going out with concussions Saturday, uh, how much has that, uh, that process evolved uh, over time in terms of treating that, and how different is it from when you were a player? Well, I don't, I don't think we want to talk about it. When I was playing, I don't want to get anybody in trouble or anything, but um, there, there's two things when I was playing that, that weren't considered big issues. Um, if you got hit in the head and you knew your name and where you were from, you were ready to go back in, and that's not a good thing. 
And if you got the wind knocked out of you, that wasn't a big thing. But, you know, these things are all player safety issues that I think have to be looked at. And I think the protocol for what we do now in terms of concussions is really, really in the best interest of the player uh, with the testing that we do. Uh, and we can we know a baseline on every player when he's normal uh, and we can test him back to normal before we ever let him to resume activity uh, and I think that's critical really in um, managing these these types of things um, so Ruben hit his head on the ground um, so it wasn't really a helmet to helmet thing or anything uh, I think Shank I'm not sure exactly how he did it and I didn't really notice it in the film. So um, when you play an offensive line, though, that, that's not, that wouldn't be unusual. The back with Cecil. Um, Coach, one play in the game that, that um, you didn't seem to agree with the officials was the, the, I guess it was a low hit call on Rashawn Evans on their quarterback. What's the rule there? What did, what did they feel like you did wrong? And, and why did you feel the need to protect him there? Well, I, I think player safety is really important, and I don't think that guys, I would want them to do it to our quarterback, and we don't certainly coach our guys to do it to the opposing team's quarterback when you just have a free shot at the quarterback and you hit him low uh, in, in the knee area, you know, you hit him low. All right, but when a guy's being blocked, pushed in the back, or scrambling toward the quarterback, I mean, it's supposed to be a judgment call as to whether the guy went low on the guy intentionally, uh, had an opportunity to stay up, or didn't have an opportunity to stay up. And uh, I'm not criticizing the officials. I, I just, I, I just thought that you know the guy beat the guy around the edge and lowered his shoulder and was getting pushed and was off balance and it wasn't an intentional thing. That's, but that's a judgment call, and uh, we certainly. You know, have to live with whatever's called, but um, you know, it's just like the manager that comes out in baseball. I mean, did you ever see the manager come out in baseball and argue a call and the umpire change the call? No. Well, you're trying to get it right the next time, all right? So you're just trying to make sure they do it right the next time. I mean, so that's kind of how it is. We'll come back over here with Mark. Just uh, after reviewing the film in the secondary, how much was that? poor technique versus not playing the ball or whatever they were doing to surprise you guys? Well, there wasn't anything that they were doing to surprise us. Um, I think we made a couple mental errors uh, that um, the first touchdown that the tight end catches the ball and there's nobody around, uh, we busted the coverage, uh, miscommunication, very simple, easy thing. Um, you know, we just didn't play smart at times uh, in terms of executing what we were supposed to do. And there were several opportunities where we had a chance to, to make the decision you always have to make. Do I intercept the ball? Do I swat and hook the guy? Do I have to break down and tackle this guy here? Um, and we didn't do that very well. And um, we need to play better. We need to have better eye control. We need to key better. Um, and we need to execute what we do. Uh, a little better, and I think that um, players probably understand that, and uh, they certainly want to play better, and we want to help them play better. Front left with Ken. Particularly in this big stretch, how important, how valuable is a J.K. Scott, and is it, I don't know, is it kind of easy to take him for granted a little bit? No, I don't take him for granted at all. You know, I, I respect the guy's ability tremendously and uh, he has been very consistent this year so far so uh, we really um, have a great respect for the hard work that he's done and um, what a weapon he is for us in terms of control and vertical field position in the game and um, you know we, we don't take him for granted but um, you know we have one game that we're concerned about so there's no stretch or anything it's just one game so that's this week uh, and that that's the most important thing that we're trying to do and hopefully we'll get him to execute well this week and uh, keep keep the consistency up to where uh, it's beneficial to our team back over here with Ben. 
I know it's part of the message every week, but given some of the comebacks that Tennessee has had this year, how critical is it to get a full 60 minutes out of this game and kind of not let up? Well, I think that was part of the original message, message that um, in, in, we, 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 we need to do a better job of that. We can't relax in games. We can't have lapses in games. We can't think just because we're ahead. You know, we always talk about no scoreboard, keep playing. Um, but when, when you relax, you let the momentum of the game change, and that's hard to get back. Um, so, and the way people score points now, I mean, there's been numerous games where people are ahead by 21 points and end up losing the game. So I, I think for everybody on the team to understand that, whether you're playing on special teams, offense, defense, it's really, really important. You're either controlling the game, forget about winning the game. You're either in control of the game or you're not. And if you don't stay in control of the game, then you're giving the other team a lot of opportunities to gain the momentum in the game that they need to get back in the game and maybe come back and have a chance to beat you. Okay, we'll go in the back here. Coach, how often in practice do you practice defending a Hail Mary, and what are some of the keys for defending that? Well, everybody has a philosophy about how to do it. Um, but, you know, we, we sort of try to man match them. Um, we have certain guys that play the ball. We have certain guys that box out. Um, so, you know, I've lost games on this before. I don't think this is a play that anybody can take for granted, which is sometimes hard to get the players sold on, uh, that they really have to go execute this play, that it is a play that um, can make a big difference in the game. Um, I, I, I tell our players chapter and verse every game that, this has been an issue. I mean, we won a game at LSU, you know, the Bluegrass Miracle on the same kind of thing. They already dumped the Gatorade on the, on the other coach. All right, so it's not a play you can take for granted. And I think a lot of people assume that it's, it's a low percentage play. They're not going to complete the ball. All right, but when you don't execute and do things correctly, you give them every opportunity to get the ball. So uh, we do practice it uh, on Thursdays. Uh, we practice it during scrimmages. We practice in a preseason. Uh, we practice it every week. Um, and there's also plays that come off of that. You know, people have hook and ladder. They have different other plays that, you know, also have to be uh, practiced and defended. Okay, a couple more, Alex and then Joe. I want to ask about Minka. His development as a cornerback, obviously the three interception game was, was huge, but his ability just to read plays from the backfield, what, what have you, defensive backfield, what have you seen his development in that area? Well, Minka's a really hard worker. He's a bright guy. He's a smart guy. He's a very instinctive player. Um, and, you know, he's played really, really well for us. And um, hopefully we're going to be able to con continue to get him to play that way. But, um, you know, when I talk about discipline, eye control, looking at the right thing, you know, understanding what the other team's trying to do so that you put yourself in the best position to take advantage of it, you know, he probably does that as well as anybody that we have, you know, on defense. And, um, and I think that he ends up making plays because of it. Uh, I think some of our other guys, they want to make plays. Uh, but they got to understand that you got to pay attention to detail. You got to look at the right things. You got to put yourself in the right position, uh, and then you're going to have you're going to give yourself the best opportunity to make plays. And that that's the thing that um, hopefully we can use some of those plays as an example to help others do the same. Back with Joe. We'll finish up. Coach, you've touched on this a little bit already. Uh, just keeping the foot down in the in the second half. Uh, do those uh, occasional lapses become even more of a concern when you're dealing with an opponent that's shown a knack for big rallies in the second half? Well, you know, I'm always concerned about our team. Um, so it's always a concern to me. I don't know if anybody noticed, but I wasn't the happiest camper, you know, in the second half or after the game, for that matter. Um, because we weren't in control of the game and we didn't control the game. So uh, I think it's always an issue regardless of who you're playing. Uh, obviously, people that have really good teams have more capabilities uh, to be able to create plays that can change momentum in games, uh, that players have to play through. 
And, you know, the best time to score is when the other team scores. All right, so if they score, you got to answer the bell. Uh, and you got to keep the ball and you got to control, control the game. You know, that's, that's what we're talking about here. Um, so sometimes you win, but did you really control the game? And I don't think we controlled the game in the second half. So that's not something that we can do in the future and continue to win. We're just not going to do it. It's not going to happen that way. Uh, not when you play good teams. And Arkansas was a good team. Uh, and what if Minka does intercept the pass in the end zone and run it back for 100 yards and they score on that drive rather than us score? That's a 14-point swing in the game. Now all of a sudden you're, you're, you're in the middle of it was 42 to 24. Now it's 42 to 31. I mean, and there's a lot of time left to go in the game. So got to be in control of the game. Okay. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thank you.